All right, guys, you ever feel like your computer's out to get you? Imagine that, but time's a thousand. That's life for the IT department. Today, we're diving deep into their world, following a team on the edge as they tackle one tech nightmare after another. Can they keep it together, or will the whole system crash and burn? Let's find out. Ticket one, where are my emails? Picture this. It's 8 a.m., the coffee's barely brewed, and the CEO bursts in like a hurricane. His inbox, emptier than my wallet after a trip to Micro Center. Where are my emails? He roars, his face a lovely shade of crimson. The team scrambles, adrenaline pumping harder than the server fans on a hot day. They dive into the logs, tracing the digital breadcrumbs. Was it a rogue delete button? A corrupted PST file? Nope. Something far more sinister, an auto-delete rule, silently wiping his inbox clean every night. Talk about a ticking time bomb. With the CEO breathing down their necks, they disable the rule and manage to recover the lost emails from the server backups. It's a close call, but they pull it off, averting a corporate meltdown. The IT team shares a collective sigh of relief, knowing they've dodged a bullet. Ticket 2. My account's been hacked. Someone's sending spam from my email. Just as the team catches their breath, Sarah, the head of marketing, rushes in, her face pale. My account's been hacked, she exclaims. Someone's sending spam from my email. The team springs into action, their blood running cold. This isn't just a case of vanishing emails. This is a full-blown security breach. They immediately isolate Sarah's account, cutting off the hacker's access. But the clock is ticking. They need to find out how deep this rabbit hole goes. Logs are analyzed, firewalls scrutinized, and after some frantic keyboard wizardry, they find it. A cleverly hidden backdoor, granting the hacker access to the system. It's like finding a loose screw in a rocket ship. Small but with potentially catastrophic consequences. They work feverishly, patching the vulnerability, enabling multi-factor authentication on all critical accounts, and bolstering the firewall like it's the Great Wall of China. The source of the hack, an IP address traced to a shady internet cafe halfway across the world. They block it faster than you can say cybersecurity. Ticket 3. Just when things seem to be calming down, a new wave of chaos erupts, this time from the most unlikely of sources, the office printer. What starts as a trickle of complaints, strange characters, upside-down pages, quickly escalates into a full-blown paper jam of pandemonium. Employees gather around the printer, their faces a mixture of amusement and frustration holding up sheets of paper covered in bizarre symbols and nonsensical messages. The IT team, initially suspecting a mundane printer driver issue, investigates further only to uncover something far more entertaining and disturbing. Someone has installed a prank script on the printer, turning it into a rogue agent of chaos. They find themselves staring at lines of code not designed to steal data or crash systems, but to unleash a torrent of ridiculous printouts. It's childish, it's annoying, and it's driving everyone up the wall. The rogue script is identified and purged. The printer firmware is updated to the latest version, and access to the printer settings is restricted to admin accounts only. Ticket four, the tension in the office is thicker than a dial-up connection. Oh no, not again. The CEO is locked out of his account. This time it's not a mischievous auto-delete rule. It's the real deal. A full-blown account lockout, just minutes before a crucial board meeting. The CEO, visibly flustered, paces outside his office, phone glued to his ear, barking orders and demanding immediate access. I need access now. This meeting is critical. The pressure is on and the team knows it. They swarm the problem like ants on a dropped donut. 
Password resets, security questions, two-factor authentication. We've tried everything. But the account remains stubbornly locked. Just when it seems like all hope is lost, one of the team members, a quiet genius with a penchant for energy drinks and obscure Linux distributions, discovers the culprit, a forgotten mobile device management policy, automatically locking the account after too many failed login attempts. I've got it. It's a mobile device management policy causing the lockout. With a few deft keystrokes, they disable the policy and unlock the CEO's account. Finally, thank you everyone, I'm off to the meeting. The CEO, relieved and slightly embarrassed, rushes off to his meeting, leaving behind a trail of gratitude and a lingering scent of expensive cologne. Ticket 5. The air crackles with tension. The team huddles around a monitor, faces illuminated by the cold blue glow. Whispers of impossible and never seen this before hang in the air. The marketing team is in a frenzy. An entire project folder filled with months of work has vanished from OneDrive. Poof, gone like it never existed. The team dives into the digital abyss, scouring server logs, checking recycle bins, and praying to the data recovery gods. But the files are nowhere to be found. It's like trying to find a specific drop of water in the ocean. The silence in the room is broken only by the frantic clicking of keyboards and the low hum of the server room. Just when they're about to declare digital defeat, one team member, their eyes bloodshot from staring at lines of code for hours, notices something peculiar. A timestamp anomaly, a discrepancy in the file modification history. It's subtle, almost invisible, but it's there. Like a digital fingerprint, it points to the culprit accidental deletion, not by a malicious hacker, but by an intern with too much access and not enough coffee. Relief washes over the team, followed by a wave of exhaustion. They restore the files from a recent backup, thankful for the foresight of setting up regular backups. Ticket 6. Day, already a roller coaster of IT mayhem, takes another nosedive. An employee, let's call him Bob, reports his computer is acting weird. Now, weird in IT terms could mean anything from a flickering monitor to a full-blown alien invasion. But something tells the team this is more serious than a rogue screensaver. Bob's computer, usually a model citizen of the digital world, is now sluggish, unresponsive, and prone to random pop-ups that make even the most hardened IT professional blush. It's like someone swapped his trusty workstation for a cheap knockoff, riddled with digital gremlins. The team quarantines Bob's computer, cutting it off from the network faster than you can say ransomware. They run a full system scan, their eyes glued to the progress bar, hoping against hope it's not as bad as it looks. But deep down they know. The telltale signs are all there. Slow performance, strange network activity, and enough suspicious files to make a security expert weep. Bingo! The scan confirms their suspicions. A particularly nasty Trojan horse has burrowed its way into Bob's system, disguised as a harmless PDF attachment. Classic. Ticket 7. The clock is ticking and the pressure is on. The IT team, already running on fumes and caffeine, faces their final challenge of the day, a critical data migration. They're tasked with moving terabytes of data to a new server, a task as delicate and complex as performing open heart surgery on a mainframe. The migration starts smoothly enough, progress bars inching forward, data packets flowing like a digital river, but then disaster strikes. The transfer speed slows to a crawl, the progress bar seemingly frozen in time. The team watches in horror as the estimated completion time stretches from hours to days. Panic sets in. The new server, already paid for and prepped, sits idle, a monument to their impending failure. They scramble to diagnose the problem, their eyes darting between monitors, their fingers flying across keyboards. Is it a bandwidth bottleneck? A faulty network cable, a rogue intern streaming cat videos in 4K. After what feels like an eternity, they pinpoint the culprit, 
a rogue backup process, greedily hogging all the bandwidth like a digital black hole. They quickly pause the backup, freeing up precious bandwidth. But it's not enough. They need to get this data transferred and they need to do it now. Thinking quickly, they implement Azure File Sync, leveraging the power of the cloud to accelerate the transfer. They also implement load balancing, distributing the workload across multiple network connections. Slowly but surely, the transfer speed picks up. As the sun sets on the exhausted IT team, a sense of accomplishment washes over them. They've faced down every challenge thrown their way, vanishing emails, security breaches, rogue printers, locked out CEOs, data loss, malware infections, and data migration meltdowns. But amidst the victory, a seed of doubt lingers. Were these incidents just a series of unfortunate events or something more sinister? The team can't shake the feeling that something is amiss, that someone somewhere is pulling the strings. Was it the disgruntled employee passed over for a promotion? The jealous competitor trying to sabotage their operations? Or something even more unexpected? The mystery remains unsolved for now. Subscribe to Ask to Know and stay tuned for part four, The IT Betrayal. Michael and Emily grilling a new IT support candidate. All right. Let's see if you have what it takes to handle our help desk chaos. Ready? Absolutely. Were these incidents just a series of unfortunate events or something more sinister? A user reports their computer is running slow. How do you troubleshoot it? Was it the disgruntled employee passed over for a promotion? First, I start by checking Task Manager for high CPU memory usage. Run a malware scan to rule out infections. Clear temporary files using disk cleanup. Check startup programs and disable unnecessary ones. Check hardware, RAM, disk health if the issue persists. Good, but what if this happens to the CEO five minutes before a big meeting? I'd offer a temporary workaround, like restarting in safe mode or using a secondary device while I investigate further. A user keeps forgetting their password and is locked out. What do you do? I will start by verifying user identity, security questions or secondary authentication. Unlock the account in Active Directory or Azure AD. Reset password and ensure it meets security policies. Enable self-service password reset, if company policy allows. Educate the user on using a password manager or MFA for security. Now what if they claim they never changed their password, but logs say otherwise? I'd check the audit logs for unauthorized activity and report any suspicious behavior to security. A user's network drive is missing, how do you fix it? First, I will check if the drive is mapped in File Explorer. Reconnect the network drive using the correct UNC path. Verify the user has correct permissions in Active Directory. Check if the file server is accessible via ping. Restart the PC and reattempt connection. And what if they need access immediately? I'd provide a temporary direct path or grant access from another device while resolving the issue. Good, but what if this happens to the CEO five minutes before a big meeting? I'd offer a temporary workaround, like restarting in safe mode or using a secondary device while I investigate further. A company-wide printer outage is causing chaos. What's your action plan? For all printer issues, check if all printers are affected or only specific ones. Restart the print spooler service on the server. Update or reinstall drivers if necessary. Check network connectivity and firewall settings. Communicate with users and provide alternatives, for example, another printer. What if an executive is furious and demands an immediate fix? I'd prioritize their request, offer a workaround like a temporary direct print and escalate if needed. A cyber attack is detected on the network. What's your immediate response? If cyber attack detected, I will isolate the affected systems to prevent spread. Identify the attack type, malware, phishing, brute force, etc. Block the attacker's IP using firewall rules. Check logs for entry points and compromised accounts. 
Report the incident and assist security teams with further investigation. What if you suspect an insider is responsible? I discreetly gather evidence, escalate to security, and ensure all system logs are preserved for investigation. Good! But what if this happens to the CEO five minutes before a big meeting? I'd offer a temporary workaround, like restarting in safe mode or using a secondary device while I investigate further. Impressive responses. Welcome to the team. Like and subscribe to Ask to Know for more tech insights. Learn with the difference.